Some scientists think that dark matter in the universe is invisible, mysterious, only interacts with gravity, could be made of tiny particles that are lighter than an electron, and could affect the signals of some of the most extreme objects in the cosmos. This is the story of ultralight dark matter, and how a team of researchers used an array of radio telescopes to look for it in our own galaxy. We all agree that dark matter is one of the biggest mysteries of modern physics. It is a form of matter that does not emit or reflect any light, but we know it exists because it has a gravitational effect on the visible matter around it. Scientists estimate that dark matter makes up about 85% of the total matter in the universe, but they have no idea what it is made of. There are many possible candidates for dark matter, such as weakly interacting massive particles, WIMPs, primordial black holes, or ultralight particles. Each of these candidates has different properties and predictions, and scientists use different methods and experiments to try to detect them. One of these methods is pulsar timing, which uses the signals of pulsars to probe the nature of dark matter. In this video, I will tell you about a recent study that used pulsar timing to test the hypothesis that dark matter could be composed of ultralight particles, also known as axion-like particles. ALPs. I will explain how these particles could affect the timing of pulsars, how the researchers use the European Pulsar Timing Array EPTA, to look for them in the Milky Way galaxy, and what they found. I will also discuss the implications and limitations of this study and what it means for the future of dark matter research. The main takeaway is that the researchers' data does not support the ultralight dark matter paradigm and that other types of dark matter candidates or alternative theories of gravity should be considered. If you are curious about this topic and want to learn more, stay tuned and watch this video until the end. Pulsars are rapidly spinning neutron stars that emit periodic radio signals, like cosmic lighthouses. They are formed when massive stars explode in supernovae, and leave behind dense cores that collapse under their own gravity. Pulsars are very stable and precise, and they can be used as cosmic clocks to test the laws of gravity and search for gravitational waves, which are ripples in spacetime caused by violent events in the universe. But how can pulsars help us understand dark matter? Well, pulsars can also be affected by dark matter, which can alter their signals in different ways. For instance, if dark matter is composed of ultralight particles, these particles could form a large and diffuse cloud around the galaxy, called a dark matter halo. As the Earth and the pulsars move through this halo, they would experience tiny variations in their gravitational potential, which would cause small changes in the arrival time of the pulsar signals. This effect is called the Shapiro time delay, and it is proportional to the mass and density of the dark matter particles. By measuring the timing of pulsars, scientists can try to detect these variations and infer the properties of the dark matter particles. But how do we measure the timing of pulsars? To do this, we need a network of radio telescopes that can observe a large number of pulsars over a long period of time. These telescopes collect the data from the pulsar signals and combine them to create a pulsar timing array, which is a powerful tool to study the effects of gravity and dark matter on pulsar signals. There are several pulsar timing arrays around the world, such as the North American Nanohertz Observatory for Gravitational Waves, the Parkes Pulsar Timing Array, and the European Pulsar Timing Array. Each of these arrays has its own advantages and disadvantages, such as the number of pulsars, the sensitivity of the telescopes, and the duration of the observations. So, what is the European Pulsar Timing Array, or EPTA for short, and how is it used to look for ultralight dark matter in the Milky Way galaxy, and what methods and results the researchers obtained, and how they compared them with other models and experiments? The EPTA is a collaboration of five radio telescopes in Europe that observe a network of pulsars in the Milky Way galaxy. It combines the data from these telescopes to create a pulsar timing array which is a powerful tool to study the effects of gravity and dark matter on pulsar signals. The EPTA has been collecting data for more than a decade, and it recently released its second dataset, which contains the timing of 47 pulsars over a span of 12 years. The researchers used a statistical technique called Bayesian inference 
to analyze the data and compare different models of dark matter and gravity. They assumed that the dark matter halo follows a standard profile called the navarro frank white profile, which describes how the density of dark matter varies with distance from the center of the galaxy. They also assumed that the dark matter particles are axion-like particles, which have a specific relation between their mass and their coupling to gravity, called the QCD axion relation. They then calculated the likelihood of each model given the data and used a criterion called the Bayes factor to compare the models and determine which one was more favored by the data. The researchers tested two main hypotheses. The null hypothesis, which assumes that there is no dark matter effect on the pulsar signals, and the alternative hypothesis, which assumes that there is a dark matter effect caused by ultralight particles. They also tested different values of the mass and density of the axion-like particles and different scenarios of the gravitational theory, such as general relativity or modified gravity. They found that the null hypothesis is more likely than the alternative hypothesis for all the cases they considered, and that they can exclude a range of possible masses and densities for the axion-like particles. They also set a new upper bound on the probability that axion-like particles are produced by the decay of a subatomic particle called atomasson, which is created by the collisions of cosmic rays with the Earth's atmosphere. Now let's see what the researchers found and what the implications of their study are. The researchers found that the European Pulsar Timing Array data does not show any evidence of the Shapiro time delay caused by ultralight dark matter, and that they can exclude a range of possible masses and densities for the axion-like particles. They also set a new upper bound on the probability that axion-like particles are produced by the ETA meson decay, which is a rare and poorly understood process. They concluded that the EPTA data challenges the ultralight dark matter paradigm and suggests that other types of dark matter candidates or alternative theories of gravity should be explored. This study is one of the most stringent tests of ultralight dark matter using pulsar timing, and it improves the previous limits by more than an order of magnitude. It also provides a new way to constrain the production of axion-like particles by ETA meson decay which is a potential source of axion-like particles in the galaxy. However, the study also has some limitations and uncertainties, such as the choice of the dark matter profile, the validity of the QCD axion relation, and the possible contamination of the data by other sources of noise or signals, such as gravitational waves or solar system effects. Therefore, more data and analysis are needed to confirm or refute the results and to explore other possibilities. The EPTA and other pulsar timing arrays are expected to improve their sensitivity and precision in the future, and to collaborate with each other to form a global pulsar timing array, which could increase the chances of detecting dark matter or other astrophysical phenomena. The pulsar timing arrays are also complementary to other experiments and observations that search for dark matter, such as direct detection experiments, indirect detection experiments, and cosmological surveys. By combining the information from different sources, scientists hope to solve the mystery of dark matter and reveal its nature and origin. Thank you for your attention and interest in this video. I hope you have learned something new and exciting about the universe and its mysteries and have been inspired to think more critically and creatively about the nature of dark matter and the methods of science. As the famous physicist Richard Feynman once said, the most beautiful thing in science is not to know the answer, but to wonder about it. Thank you.